Here we are once again. Vlog number what? 19. 19, and this one is about Buffalo Lake NWR. National Wildlife Refuge located in Humboldt. 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 B O L T? Yes. Texas, uh, which is south, south or west of, southwest of Amarillo. More south than west. Well, yeah. for you guys, it'd be south and west. Yeah, something like that. But it was only how far was, was it from? From Caprock Canyons? Yeah. No, from Palo Duro. Palo it Duro. was only maybe 20, yeah. 25 miles, not even. So, yeah. nice place. Yeah. I mean, we pulled up once again because we had already scouted it out. Yep. Pulled yep. up to check in, went in, wanted to go to the office, find out a little bit about Buffalo Lake, and yeah. uh, doors not, locked, no not note, nothing. It's Friday, and it's, yeah. uh, I don't know. It wasn't late. Maybe it was we left 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Because, yeah, we It wasn't lunchtime. No. Yeah. The gate to the entrance, so you you come into the park, and there's this, you know, bef you, you, you know, you're driving down the road, and there's a sign. You go in the entrance road, you go a little ways, and then you come to this gate. And on the right, just before the gate, is a little building, like an outbuilding, half, you know, three three walls. And you go in there, and you sign in, and you pay, and... You do it's that got some information. information about the park, a little bit of signs. But just just beyond that, before you go through the actual gate, is another driveway up to the right that goes up to the office. So when we scoped it out the day before, we went up there and there was nobody there. Right. Closed, locked up, yep. no sign on the door saying, up, oh, we'll be back. Nothing yeah, like that. Nothing just, like that. So, so then that day that we actually got there, we had the trailer with us and everything. We showed up and actually paid and got the tag for the windshield. We didn't pay. No, because we don't pay. Again, it's the uh, America the Beautiful Pass for National Wildlife Refuges. We don't pay. So we we drove up to the office again and again. Nobody there. Nobody there. So that was Friday. So we didn't see anybody on Thursday. We didn't see anybody on Friday. Saturday and Sunday, they're closed. Or the office is closed yep. and so, then when we left on Monday Tuesday right you know, Tuesday well, we left. not to speed ahead but still we hadn't seen anybody the whole time we were there nobody ever drove maybe. through I mean right. over at Muleshoe we at least yeah. had the sheriff that would drive through or anything like this and this was also a place a Buffalo Lake that got locked the gates got locked every night at 8, eight o'clock and reopened at 8 in the morning so when she says the gates get locked, what happens is where the entrance is to the park, there's an exit side and an entrance side with an island in the middle and the fences extend from either side of the entrance and exit. So you can't really go around if everything was closed. But they only take a gate across the entrance part and they leave the exit open in case there's an emergency. Well, you would say, well, what keeps people from driving in the, the, the wrong way? I'll tell you what what's there is one of those there's all these tire shredders if you go in the wrong way man yeah. it'll just it didn't even tell you it warns you. you yeah warns you when you're leaving don't back up <laughs> when you're getting through the gate because it'll it'll rip up your tires so we got there and we went down into the canyon and scoped out there was not a canyon i mean uh well it's it was sort of like, like a valley a, a little bit yeah yeah but more prairie grass stuff like that i'm stuck on canyons i know it's canyons. where we've been but this is all prairie grass they had had a burn yep controlled yep. burn about probably two weeks maybe not even two right. weeks before right. so the entire area yep. behind us yep. and actually in front of us had been burned yep which is fine yep. didn't smell bad no and it was only what did he say about a month ago a, a few weeks to a month the guy that came by the site yeah. that one time what did, Say what? I, we, you asked him when they did the prescribed burn, yeah. and you, you, he said a couple of weeks to a month, something like that. But Buffalo Lake is no longer a lake. Right. Hasn't There's been no a lake water. from, we're guessing, 20 years-ish. Yeah, probably, yeah. There's no water left there. Yeah. Another playa grassland where uh, Buffalo Lake is on a migratory route. Supposedly when it rains, the runoff fills up and migratory birds blah 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 but i we it's sort of sketchy the signs in the kiosk all around 
the tour road that goes through this place talk about how it's an active wildlife place but at the same time you see contradictions of it like there doesn't look like there's been water in there for a long time right and there, once again there's nobody to ask nobody to ask the other thing that we heard about was that the the lake we are at now is in fact takes place of buffalo lake one of the reasons being and that's if we have if i haven't said it before we're at um lake meredith in fritch texas that's where we're filming but this particular lake we're at right now is is a lake that supposedly took the place of buffalo lake because cattle that were being raised huge amounts of cattle feed lots feed lots if you don't know about feed lots go ahead and google that the runoff from the feed lots came in and contaminated the water with at phosphates and nitrates to buffalo such a degree lake, yeah. yeah buffalo like to such a degree there was a huge and has been an algae bloom and basically sucked all the oxygen out of the water fish all died yeah, the, yeah plant the life off, died yeah. So now what they're trying to do is they're trying to grow vegetation in the lake bed that they can harvest every year and that and taking that away in the form, say, of hay, hoping to remove some of those excess phosphates and nitrates. But sad. But the contradiction here is that they also had planted a thing called salt cedars here. And I don't want to get into a big environmental discussion, so maybe I shouldn't and just say right. it's a boondoggle. Yeah. The government, boy, I don't know. Uh, it just was like when you when you read the history, and we were only there four or five days. Not like we went to the library right. and did a whole lot of research on this. But there's definitely a whole bunch of mistakes that were made there. Seems eco to be. Yeah. Ecologically. And now it seems like the only reason for is it, for the existence of this place, because there wasn't a whole lot of wildlife there, is for the farmers to come in and graze on it, cut hay off of it, and for us to camp on it. So Right, because now they have these trees, salt cedars there, that I right. read an article, I think it dated yeah. 2016, and the biologists there are now yeah. poisoning the salt cedars with Pe uh, pesticides. Herbicide. No, yeah, herbicide. herbicides. Yeah. So that they can kill the trees, yep. so they can take them out because the salt cedars suck yep. up so much water. Three hundred, yeah. You, I, don't I know, think I, yeah, I don't it, know how much it's it is. Gallons it's gallons and probably gallons a, lot. a day. So much so that they know there's a problem right. with it. And then we get to this lake, Lake Meredith, and we think we've seen all kinds of salt cedar here, which were not indigenous to this area. They were brought in specifically for these types of areas that were man-made. So. I don't know. We'll do more more research on that. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to do the research yeah. while we're here because yeah. we don't have internet. Yeah, and yeah, this place in particular is like absolutely none. Yeah. So no we're totally signal. off the grid. No cell phone, no nothing. Right. Um, but the... Okay, so one thing we want to talk about is the wind. Ugh. The wind at Buffalo Lake was... Undescribable. Can't even imagine what it's like. You can't do anything, you can't walk. Because when you walk, you're walking in a dust storm most of the time. You can't hear each other talk. So if she was, Yvette was three feet from me and said something, I'd be like, what, what, you know, and then the roar in your ears. and It's just, it's absolutely oh. crazy. But, so I did Google, where's the windiest place oh, in Oh yeah, Texas? guess where the windiest place? Amarillo. <laughs> is... We're 20 or 30 miles from Amarillo. Right, so we're, yeah. and their windiest time is March and April. And we're there. So, we were just, next yeah. year we won't be making this no, mistake. No, we if we were in Texas next year, we'll be here at a different time and oh, a different gosh. place. Gosh, yeah, because it's just it's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, but we, you know, it was nice. It was quiet. We had some freakish, 
for incidents with other people that stayed there. So I'm not. I'm just. Not, I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna go too far into detail. Well, it's, I, I'm gonna go with the one because I ended up picking up a lot of garbage. Oh yeah, yeah. We okay. had this couple, young couple, in a jeep, tent camping. Yep. They were far away from us. They didn't make any noise. All that was fine and dandy. The next day, I think you were out for a bike ride. Yeah, I was out for up in the, down on the lake. Bed. They decide to leave their campsite. They drive by me to go down the circle, turn around. They're driving a little too fast. They've got a bag of garbage hanging out the window. Yeah. Which is just crazy. Yep. Uh, okay. I think I, at this point, I'm on my phone talking to my sister. Yep. They're long gone. I'm She's... walking down the road talking to my sister. And the amount of garbage that they let go was right. just there was yeah. a box of wine they left yeah. in their campsite. The garbage blew out of their garbage bag that was hanging on there, out of their window. Garbage everywhere. Yeah. They were just pigs. And I'm like, seriously. And, that, and, the thing and I cleaned it up because right. it was just. Nobody else was gone. Right. We didn't see anybody pigs. for management come down ever. The whole time we were there, nobody camp came down, a sheriff or a ranger, nobody was ever there. But the thing that blew me away is here they sh they showed up they drive down the strip of campsites we're on a long strip and then there was a turnaround at the end then you go back and we ended up down towards the end of the strip and there are two bathrooms one's at each end of the strip so there'd be like six or seven campsites a break with some woods and then six or seven more campsites but you could from our campsite with binoculars you could see all the way down so they come ripping up through when they came in. They turned around and they went ripping back, dust flying everywhere. They got to the site, and I kid you not, and it was like broad daylight. I just happened to look, and he gets out of the car and just throws, unzips his Johnson and relieves himself right there in front of the Jeep. Doesn't even go behind the Jeep. I thought that was interesting, but it wasn't interesting enough because she gets out of the Jeep. And she squats right there between me and the Jeep, yeah. broad daylight. Uh, so, all right. So, but you know what? And you see that and you're like, all right, who are these people? Right. Obviously, they're just pigs. Wow. That's pretty strong. Really? All the garbage and everything else? Yeah. No, I mean, that's pretty strong to insult pigs like that. Oh, yeah, that's true. I, yeah, that wasn't right. Pigs anyway. are probably cleaner than that. So, we had enough of the wind and, and all the... Uh, and then there was a couple other incidents that weren't as bad, more funny than spooky, but yeah. but, it, but was, it was a nice area. It was a nice area. It's quiet. I think we would go back there again, maybe in a different time where there isn't howling winds 24 hours a day. Right. right. And actually, now that we've been here, I would probably come here before I would go. Exactly. Oh yeah, absolutely. Since it's close. And again, like we've said, and we forgot to say in the last video burn ban in effect still there'll be a burn back burn ban in effect until we get out of texas at this there's no sign of rain no sign of rain hasn't been any rain here it's nice around the lake here you can see flowers and stuff growing but everyone else it's just dry and the wind's blowing and the sand's flowing across okay, the road all the time we can't be talking about this place anymore. oh giving them too much yeah all right okay. so next time on wow it'll be vlog number 20 we'll be talking about Lake Meredith. In Chuck Fritch, Texas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. There you Fritch. go, Brittany. Uh, so until next time, take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.